Is Magic Stone any good? It's a question that gets debated time and time again in the D&D community. In this video, I'll try to sort through the relevant points, talk about what and who Magic Stone is good for, and give my final verdict on whether or not your character should add this cantrip to their arsenal. But first, what exactly does Magic Stone do? Well, it's a touch-ranged bonus action cantrip that turns three pebbles into magic pebbles for one minute. The magic pebbles can be used as either a thrown weapon with a 60 foot range, or be used with a sling up to 30 feet or up to 120 feet with disadvantage on the attack roll. The important parts of Magic Stone is that these pebbles can be used by anyone, not just the spellcaster. And when a pebble hits the target, it takes magical bludgeoning damage equal to 1d6 plus the spellcaster's spellcasting modifier. So, if you're a druid with a plus 3 wisdom modifier, Magic Stone deals 1d6 plus 3 damage on hit, 6.5 damage on average. Now, from a pure damage perspective, this is pretty solid. Only two other cantrips match this average damage, the oft-resisted and much-avoided poison spray and the highly regarded Toll the Dead. Magic Stone hits hard, so case closed, it's a good spell, right? Not so fast, because we're not done here. What I failed to mention up till now is that Magic Stone's damage doesn't scale with character level at all. The only damage scaling you get is when you improve your spellcasting modifier. This means that a spell like Firebolt doubles from 5.5 average damage at 1st level to 11 average damage at 5th level. In that same time frame, your spellcasting modifier probably goes up by 1, and your Magic Stone goes from 6.5 average damage to 7.5 average damage. Okay, so Magic Stone is good at levels 1 to 4 and then is bad? Case closed now, right? Well, in fairness, that is kind of the TLDR of this video, but it's not the whole story because dun -da -da -dun, extra attack exists, and niche uses of magic stone are still valuable. Let's talk about extra attack first and then get into some of those niche uses. For starters, extra attack keeps magic stone relevant from levels 5 to 10. To continue the example from above, Firebolt's average damage scales to 11 at character level 5. For a magic stone user with extra attack and a plus 4 spellcasting modifier, it scales to 15. 36% more damage. Great, but so what? Druids and Warlocks don't have extra attack, and no Warlock who cares about optimal damage is gonna use anything but Eldritch Blast anyway. So I guess that means Magic Stone is only good for Armorer and Battlesmith Artificers then, since they're the only subclasses with both Magic Stone and extra attack built in. Yes and no. Yes, Magic Stone is dope on these Artificer subclasses, but that's not the only reason that this cantrip stays relevant in Tier 2 of play. I've got one more neat character build that makes use of Magic Stone as their primary attack. Arcane Trickster Rogue, with a 1 level Artificer multiclass dip. The goal here is to be a ranged rogue who can fully invest in intelligence as their single ability score dependency. Most importantly, Magic Stone works with sneak attack when you use a sling, since it's a ranged weapon. Second most importantly, your attack and saving throw based spells won't suck which they'd normally do as an arcane trickster since other spellcasters can max out their spellcasting stat first, while you're normally stuck putting your points in decks so your regular attacks can actually land. Magic Stone allows you to ignore decks, although your AC will be worse than a normal rogue, in exchange for having a better time landing spells like Charm Person, Tasha Sidious Laughter, Hold Person, Suggestion, and Hypnotic Pattern. These spells will land 10-15% to more often than a normal arcane trickster, and you'll feel like more of a spellcaster. Why Artificer Multiclass? Well, rules as written, neither the Magic Initiate nor Spell Sniper feats include Artificer spells as option. Taking it as a Druid or a Warlock spell would force you to use Wisdom or Charisma as your modifier for it, which defeats the purpose. Although, Inquisitive Rogues could still maybe figure something out there. Okay, so Arcane Trickster Rogues, Armorers, and Battlesmith Artificers might find a reason to go for Magic Stone. As would really any class with extra attack, who takes a 1 level dip and do Druid, Warlock, or Artificer. But that's not all. There are also fun niche uses of Magic Stone, which admittedly may or may not be relevant in your campaign. Starting with the ability to provide magic weapons to players or NPCs who don't have magic weapons. Technically, Dungeons & Dragons doesn't have a magical damage type, but some monsters are resistant or immune to damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. For the sake of overcoming these resistances and immunities, Magic Stone's damage is considered magic and overcoming resistance and immunities to non-magical weapons is a real challenge at early levels. Most DMs don't throw around magic weapons in the first tier of play, so many martial classes are left feeling useless when these enemies first pop up. Magic Stone is the perfect solution for these situations. It's also great for equipping NPCs you are escorting or fighting alongside with a magic weapon, if they don't already have one. Speaking of which, Magic Stone is also great for providing weapons to players or NPCs who don't have any weapons. 
In a situation where your party has been completely disarmed or you've willingly handed over your weapons to gain entry somewhere, Magic Stone ensures you've always got an ace up your sleeve. Three, actually. Similarly, you can always give Magic Stones to a summoned ally. A Pact of the Chain Warlock's Familiar is the first choice that comes up. Magic Stone does more damage than whatever attacks they have, and certainly at a greater range. And last but not least, for the classes and subclasses without extra attack, you can always switch Magic Stone out at 5th level. If you don't plan on getting extra attack in some way, or you just don't like how Magic Stone feels past level 5, you can always swap it out. Artificers, Druids, and Warlocks all have class features that allow for swapping cantrips at certain levels. Alright, so that's why Magic Stone can be a good spell and a few tricks for using it. I'd also love to hear your ideas and stories with Magic Stone in the comments. I'm sure I've missed a few applications of the spell. But for now, let's cover the most confusing rule around Magic Stone, which is that Magic Stone is a spell attack that can be made with a ranged weapon. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, Magic Stone works with effects that require the use of a ranged weapon, when using a sling rather than throwing it, but not with effects that require a ranged weapon attack. This means, when hurled with a sling, Magic Stone works with things like Sneak Attack, the third bullet of the Sharpshooter feat, and a Kensai Monk's Kensai Shot feature, but not with things like Hunter's Mark, the Archery Fighting Style, or the first two bullets of the Sharpshooter feat. Just read the fine print, and remember Jeremy Crawford's tip. Magic Stone works with a feature that benefits attacks in general, or ranged attacks, but not weapon attacks. If something says ranged weapon attack, Magic Stone doesn't work with it. And, of course, if you throw the magic stone rather than hurl it from a sling, you do not benefit from any features that require a ranged weapon or a ranged weapon attack. Now to answer the big question of the day. Is magic stone a good spell? My answer is yes, magic stone can be good on certain characters and at certain levels. For the armor and battlesmith artificers with extra attack who want to primarily attack at range, it's the highest damage option cantrip available all the way to tier 3. And from levels 1 to 5, it's an excellent cantrip to pick up for druids who want to fight at range. As long as you don't need your bonus action for anything else, it's really no hassle to always have magic stones prepared. While it falls off for most characters in tier 2, it retains its niche uses. They just become less and less impactful as your group gets magic weapons. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this guide on magic stone helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more like this in the future. It's a massive help for small YouTubers like me. If you have any stories about using Magic Stone in your own Dungeons & Dragons game, or questions about the spell's rules, please share them in the comments below. This is D&D Lounge, wishing you the best of luck in your next spellcasting venture.